Joining me now from Atlanta, Georgia, member of the President Trump 2020 Advisory Board and Executive Director of the National Diversity Council for Trump 2020, Bruce Lavelle. Hi, Bruce. Nice to see you again. So let me ask Thanks. you this. I'm going to start with the media. Do you think that the media is equally uh, critical of Joe Biden when it comes to aspects like his record, like his vision for the country as they are with the president? Oh, no, absolutely not. Thanks for having me. I've never seen anything like this in my life, Jan. I'm 56 years old. I've been a Republican since I was 18. I've been a part of the process from all the presidents that date back. I know I'm dating myself, but it is is bizarre. It's it's you know I'm I'm sitting here screaming. Where are the Walter Conkrites? Where are the Where is the real journalists that go out and evenly talk about both candidates evenly? And it's unfair. And Joe is getting a pass. They're letting him. Uh, uh, hide in his basement or wherever he's hiding at and giving him a pass. And they're going after President Trump, unfortunately, um, very maliciously. And it's just mm. sad. And it does a disservice to our great republic. We want great conversation on both sides. And oh. I think it's unfair. They're more, mainly doing a disservice to him by not bringing out his his particular platforms or what he wants to talk about. So yeah, it's absolutely right. It's totally biased. Right. And well, and the American people have the right to hear from both candidates, especially if they're going to be making such a big decision in the fall. Uh, exactly. Something stands out to me. You recently wrote an op-ed uh, where you slammed Joe Biden. You called him a Trojan horse, which I thought was an interesting description. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, he's owned by Ocasio and that in that left group. And, you know, with a real Democrat Joe Biden, please come out. Door number one, come on out. He can't do that, Jen. And the reason why is because he's made deals with these people. He's made deals with Bernie Sanders. And you saw Bernie Sanders. You know, I tell you, the, 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 the sad and the scary thing about Bernie is not so much as Bernie's, uh, his platform, is the stadium that he fills up who believes in that ideology. And mm. Joe has made a pact with Bernie Sanders and these groups. And then he's coming on one side saying, well, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm you know, tr trying to play the moderate side, but he's actually bought and paid for and owned by them. So therefore, he is an official Trojan horse, Jen. Well, yeah, I mean, if you look at the policy proposals he's released recently, they're literally word for word taken from Bernie Sanders' policy proposals that <laughs> exactly. he had presented during the primary. So it's kind of interesting that's not really getting called out as much as you would think. Yeah. Um, the president, though, he recently an announced a staff shakeup within his campaign. It's not something that's uncommon at this point in the race, but he does have a, a new campaign manager. So what do you think the goal is here with a move like that? Well, you know, I, I started early 2015 when Corey Lindowski was the uh, manager. Of course, you know, we went through three. But, mm -hmm. you know, Jen, a lot of campaigns, respectfully, they do have transitions. I call them the winter, spring, summer and fall. They yeah. change with the economics. They change with what's going on in the climate of, of the political world. And I will tell you, the Bill Stepien is the truth, dear. And Brad Parscales is probably the best digital man in the land. So it's a collaborative effort. It's a strong team. And I don't want to say it's shakeup. I call it a readjustment or, or moving folks around. Of course, the, the left would like to make it out to be a big deal. But listen, if I panic or anyone else panic, that's when you panic. But I have a pulse on this, and I know that uh, the, they want the best of the best to come for it. And everything's a team, you know, right. collaborative effort, Jen. Well, so no, there's no, and you're right about that. Back. You're right about that. Brad Parscale still on the team. He didn't get fired. He just got shifted no. to, to another position that he might be better suited for at this point in the race. Uh, let's talk coronavirus. So w with the reintroduction of these briefings, uh, the president's giving the camera a lot more time than he already was. How do you think that's going to play out uh, when we talk about polls going forward? Well, like in the earlier segment, you show how many 51 million tests that we've had, and we're the leader in the world. And I think it's it's a great deal to uh, a great for the president to take a lead on this and and to redirect all the findings and everything to the White House. Uh, no disrespect to CDC or any of the other uh, data uh, folks that collect the data on on the COVID-19. But, you know, we're the leader of the world and uh, the United States. And the president is taking lead on this. And he's proven that uh, some of the things out there that work. I know I have fellow doctors here in Atlanta mm. that have had administered, you know, hydroxychloroquine to help some of their patients. And I've got the text messaging and said, don't, don't put me on the news, Bruce, you know, <laughs> that actually helps. So, the, so we know what the virus is. We know how to combat it. We know how to, uh, it's different when you don't know what it is and what to do. It right. all evolves around hygiene. So I'm very happy that the president is doing these briefings and, and like, hey, we got this. We're going to yeah. take care. Want to see more videos like this? 
click on the link below and subscribe to One American News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One American News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.